priyal uh, just one more uh, one more question on your interviews if you you've explained it in much detail uh, but if you could just share some tips uh, for the exact interview uh, for mm-hmm. for our viewers so from the lbs interview perspective like don't treat it as a very formal interview like keep it as a conversation like don't just look at you being the one answering the question equally uh, have your questions ready for the interviewer from the preparation perspective read your application thoroughly because it's it's going to be all about your motivations and what you've written down in the application many a times um, the school sends a list of specific questions that they are seeking answers for or they feel there are some gaps or you would fail to mention them in your application so your interviewer might just slip them in between so make sure that if you know any such question comes up you have your answers ready because that in a way is the admissions committee trying to seek you know additional inputs with respect to what you've already told them and then one part of the interview is like a case based interview where either you have to like present a case or solve a case in 5 or 10 minutes or there's any one topic you are given and you have to speak on it for you know 5 to 10 minutes so um that's that's a one way different or structured quotient of the interview so i was given an option whether i want to do the case or i want to speak on a topic so i chose speaking on a topic and then i was given a topic and i was given 5 minutes to prepare on it and then i had to speak on it for another 5 minutes so uh, that is like the structured quotient of the interview but other than that like just it's a very free flowing conversation and i have very seldom come across someone who's had like a not happy or a not conversational interview so most of the people who interview with lbs are like yeah it was like super chill and we spoke about everything under the sun so you will enjoy the interview process that's one thing i can i can definitely vouch for got it awesome so i think the main uh, the most important thing is to be very very thorough with your own application right with the the candidate Correct. to be very thorough with their own application Correct. got it coming a bit uh, back uh to your application uh could you share some lor like le- recommendation and essay tips also with our viewers yeah so i think uh, uh, from the essay tips of course uh don't try and make it repetitive because a lot of people are just talking about the same experience again and again and i would say make a list of those 10 15 stories that i told you about and and make sure all those stories speak about a different aspect of your life uh try and make your stories personal don't try and make it repetitive and from the standpoint of an lor of course uh, like choose your recommender very wisely like more than the designation of you know whether i'm getting the recommendation from a partner or a managing director or my immediate supervisor get someone who can talk about not just your professional accomplishments but about you know how you are as a well rounded individual so make sure even your lor is not repetitive and you are giving a list of you know data points that you want your recommender to talk about of course it's up to him or her whether he or she ends up mentioning them doesn't end up mentioning them but it's always a good reference point because if your recommender is going to be like your cheerleader he or she shouldn't hesitate to mention them so prepare a list send it share it with that person and then make sure that in both these aspects nothing is like repetitive or common okay so uh uh priyal you said that uh after your interviewer gives their uh, uh gives their review uh you get uh, nay after you after you get your acceptance right uh, you get about two weeks of time to select colleges right so i want to uh, focus a bit more on that uh if you could give us a summary of your acceptances in rejects and why did you end up choosing london business school so uh, once i was done with my interview i had already started evaluating you know irrespective of where i get an accept or a reject offer from um where am i finally going uh, which college should i be zeroing down on and i had made a excel of financial requirements because i knew that um, irrespective of whichever college i get an acceptance from um, i will be applying for scholarships at all three colleges and then a scholarship decision would play a pivotal role in deciding where i go uh, because all the three colleges that apply for are within the top 10 colleges of the world so i knew that in between them there isn't much of a difference that you know oh if i go here and i don't go there it's like turn my career upside down so i knew that scholarships are going to be like the deciding factor after this and a lot of the other costs that are going to be involved so i had an excel of you know with three tabs with respect to if i go to these three colleges what are the expected expenses and then i had made made it like a dynamic excel where if i got like a partial scholarship and i just like kept tweaking the figures what would be my expected expenses and then from 
of post mba perspective also a few things that i had evaluated that you know if this is where i this is where i want to work post mba what one college has to offer what doesn't have to offer so i had basically charted everything out and i think the minute my uh, admission decision came i had also started working on my scholarship essays in parallel so the minute they came immediately the school shoots you out emails that you know you're, you can apply for this scholarship you can send us a scholarship appeal you can do this and you get a very tight window to do that so one week is all i had but because i already started working on my essays i just sat on one weekend finished all them up and i sent my extra scholarship essays and i sent my scholarship appeal and then i think in another 10 days the scholarship decisions came in and this was <clears throat> i think almost uh, somewhere in may this had happened it had happened like much later on so i think once the scholarship decisions came i kind of knew that you know so i had applied to three schools and they were like lbs ncrd and oxford and i had like um, i had some form of scholarship from all of them but i think a few reasons that i purely cho- chose lbs was uh, number one the london advantage because uh, i knew that the next one and a half to two years i wanted to be in a city where it's not just about attending school and networking with my mbas batchmates but it was a lot about you know what network i can build or what opportunities i can pursue even off campus so i just felt being in london which is regarded as one of the best student cities in the world had like an unparalleled advantage that is why lbs was my number one choice and i think the second thing that i wanted after that is um i wanted to really drive of my mba program or what i get out of it and the curriculum at lbs is super flexible so the first term is compulsory for everyone but after that you choose your t- subjects <clears throat> you choose your electives and you decide whether you want to end your mba in 15 months 18 months or 20 21 months so i wanted that kind of command because if one year down the line i felt that you know i'm i'm done and i want to end this in 15 months and get back to the job market i have that kind of flexibility whereas if i felt that you know i'm still not sure what i want to do from a post mba perspective want to intern a little more explore a few more opportunities i could you know push it back to 21 months so because that flexibility was being offered by lbs that was the second reason of choosing it and i think the third most important reason was uk lets you work part time as a student for up to 20 hours a week so uh, a lot not a lot almost every lbs student uh, does like a term time internship or a part time internship while they are studying full time so uh, over the period of 2 years you there's not just one summer internship you're doing but you actually end up doing 3 to 4 mini internships through the 2 year horizon and a lot of people have spoken to have interned in everything right from strategy and operations to working with a startup to interning in tech to working with a pe vc firm so i think this is like the best way of you know understanding you know if there was something i wanted to try in my career i can do this in these two years and decide whether this is what i want to do ahead or i want to go back to doing what i used to do pre mba so none of the other mba programs are offering that kind of flexibility so uh, obviously in the rankings lbs was number 1 but then the finance aspect was going to come into play obviously because london cost of living plus the lbs fees but then i think uh, because i got a scholarship also for them it just made it much easier for me to take a decision to say yes to them when i had all my uh, decisions in front of me understood 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 uh perfect coming to uh, my next question is about something that uh, is slightly intimidating um, to candidates uh, which is the visa policy uh, for international students in uk um, so mm-hmm. could you elaborate a bit on the visa policy during your mba as well as after your mba uh, sure so i think from during the mba perspective it was a pretty straightforward process uh, the school helps you with all the documentations and um, at least lbs had a lot of information sessions about you know how to apply and how to go about with it so uh it was honestly a very seamless process of course when <clears throat> we applied uh, the ukrainian situation was going on which is why the embassies were already very overwhelmed so we did take 6 to 8 sometimes even 9 to 10 weeks for a lot of us to get our visas but we we got it without any issues uh from a post mba perspective um, honestly don't have much insights but a few things that i've heard on from my seniors and a lot of Uh, other alumni is is um, that if you've like studied in the UK, you get like a two year permit to work in the UK after your course, and um, the transition happens like very smoothly. And right now, also UK is very open to you know um, immigrants and other people seeking job opportunities. In fact, they've come out with another type of 
uh, visa where you know if you are a graduate of any of the top 50 schools globally you can just apply for that visa and then use that visa to apply for a job in the uk so i think from a post mba perspective also it's 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 very much open uh, more than it has ever been before understood perfect uh, so moving on just to the job aspect part so are you aware like in what way does lbs play a role towards securing a job towards the end of an mba uh, yes the career services team at lbs um, is um, very helpful and uh, it's like a huge team and it's divided into different verticals like there is someone who dedicatedly looks into consulting someone who looks into just tech and product management someone looks into the startup aspect of it so uh, they number one have a team that really helps you know navigate with respect to how to go about with it uh, the alumni community is very strong so they help you connect with uh, your seniors who are studying at the same college who just bag internships that firms you are probably vying at they connect you with a lot of alums from two or three years above you who are working at the organizations you are targeting so um, there's there's this huge network that they open to you. They really help you with, you know, crafting your story, your CV, the interview and the case uh, case prep process. So there's a lot of um, support that comes from them. But of course, uh, like India, the entire school doesn't have like a very structured campus placement, as you call it, where, you know, everybody sits for the interview process. Of course, for some domains like consulting and investment banking, there is some form of structured recruiting, but it's not as much as India still for sectors like startups, private equity, venture capital, you still have to network your way in, but LVS undoubtedly opens a lot of doors for you. Understood. Okay. Uh, so one in one of the previous questions, you had highlighted about the scholarships that are there. So coming, bringing that to the fore, so what are the different kind of scholarships that are available for international students at LVS? So there are a lot of them uh, and they range right from just maybe five to 10 grands in, in pounds to a full scholarship. So if you go on the LBS website, I would suggest like that is like the best place to know the LBS specific scholarships. They have like a drop down where you can add filters with respect to the internal scholarships they have and the external ones they have. And within that also, they have scholarships specific to Indians, scholarships specific to women, scholarships specific to someone who's worked in the social impact background or energy background or or the STEM background. So I would say that just go to that portal, keep tweaking the filters and you will get a list of scholarships that you're eligible for. Uh, what I did is I made a list of scholarships where I felt um, I, I I could apply for, you know, given the different eligibility criteria that were mentioned. And then once I made a list of those scholarships, I made a scholarship appeal, which, which went in two parts. Number one, uh, why I was applying for the scholarships and my motivations of, you know, really going to LBS and why the scholarship was important for me. Mm -hmm. And the second part was I mentioned a list of the scholarships. So I made the work easier for them instead of, you know, they figuring out which scholarships I'm a fit for. I told them that, you know, these are the scholarships which I feel I'm eligible for. And this is why I'm eligible for and against each scholarship that I had, you know, shortlisted for myself. I wrote like three to four lines about, you know, this is why uh, I align well with the scholarship and this is why I should get it. So that scholarship appeal just made things much easier for the ad com than, you know, they trying to figure it out. And again, the scholarship appeal was optional. Like you can submit it if you want or they can automatically consider you for the scholarship on basis of your original application. But uh, I always emphasize that submit it because it's just a missed opportunity if you don't submit it. So I had submitted a scholarship appeal and one of the scholarships that I got was from the Laidlaw Women Leadership Fund. So uh, it's like a scholarship that is offered by the Laidlaw Foundation externally to LBS. So for that, I had to separately write three essays, uh, which I worked on and then I wrote and then I got that scholarship. So it it's like a mix of everything that happens. Perfect. Uh... So with this, we are coming to the end of our discussion, Priyan. Uh, so just in a gist, how should an aspirant build his or her profile? So I think that is the, that's a very controversial question because there is no, you know, one fit for all. And it's, it's yeah. a huge uh, black box. So uh, I have met people from the most different backgrounds. Like I know someone who just came in from two years of work experience, whereas I know someone who came in from 14 years. I know someone who had six, seven years of, you know, working with C-suite leaders, whereas I know someone who was just a sports person or a doctor and had like no professional experience at all. So I think it all burns down to just 
putting across your very authentic story uh, building what your motivations are with respect to applying for an mba and how you see lbs fitting as a jigsaw puzzle as a piece in the jigsaw puzzle to you know complete the larger picture or as a launch pad to you know take you where you see yourself next from a career standpoint so i would say just be uh, like very true authentic like whatever your true story is try and bring it out a lot of candidates just try and use a very generic story or what worked for someone else or oh, it will work for me but that that doesn't happen like and uh, of course if you need any help with your application journey like you can just reach out to me on linkedin i generally check my dms over the weekend like happy to help you out or you can just look up the blog that i've recently written which contains a lot of details about you know how i went about with the lbs application things you should definitely not be doing <laughs> that i went wrong in and hopefully if that even helps one person that's applying this year i'll i'll be a happy human <laughs> perfect so just to conclude that a very uh, confident that uh, the entire video and your blog will be very helpful to candidates yeah. out there applying this year and in the future as well and it's really sweet of you to mention that they can reach out to you as well so i hope that they Anytime. do <laughs> yeah thank you so much priyal for just appearing on our show and sharing so much insights with our viewers thank you so much no thanks a lot and i think we need more of such uh, conversations because i know a lot of people out there who want to apply but just don't know how to get started okay thank you so thank much thank you so much i hope you watch the premier league there sometime <laughs> <laughs> Hey folks thank you for watching our video please like and share this video and subscribe to our youtube channel also guys please don't forget to mention your views in the comment section below and see you soon with our next video